Thank you for inviting us here today. Um, I'm Michelle Johnson and this is Roger Powell and we're from Caerphilly Council, a little Welsh town in South Wales. Uh, today we're going to give you an overview of the SAB and what would be required from the developers when submitting a SAB application. Here are a few of the topics which we're going to discuss. Uh, Schedule 3 of the Federal Water Management Act, what is a SAB application, I'm not going to read all of them. And then obviously the last one is Caerphilly's uh, SAB set setup and Roger is going to take you through that. So, from the 7th of January 2019, all new developments of more than one dwelling or where the construction area is over 100 square metres will require SAB approval in Wales. This basically means that any new development that comes through will have to have SUDs incorporated into the design. SUDs must be designed and built in accordance with the Welsh statutory standards um, and they must be approved by the SAB before construction begins. So what is a SUD application? Well, the application form will demonstrate compliance with the statutory standards for the design, construction, operation and maintenance of the surface water system serving that new development and must be submitted to the SAB. So the applications can be submitted alongside a planning application or they can be submitted independently. But basically there's two separate application forms and there's two separate fees. But I think it's important to note that they cannot put a shovel in the ground until they get SAB approval. So what is the SAB? Under Schedule 3 of the Flood and Water Management Act, local authorities, as the SAB, have a duty to approve SUDs which follow the national standards for SUDs. With the exception of single curtilage sites, the SAB has a duty to adopt these SUDs. So basically, uh, your superstores, your schools, your cemeteries, that sort of thing, we wouldn't adopt, but we would have to approve the designs. We're also going to be doing this function alongside our Lee Local Flood Authority function, so your Ordinary Water Course Consent, your Asset Register, your Land Drainage Act, your Highway Act, um, and so on. So why do we need SUDs in Wales? Surface water is a serious problem identified in the Welsh National Strategy as a major cause of flooding of homes, the impact on citizens, communities and the cost of the Welsh economy is massive. The risk of flooding is on the rise due to climate change and urbanisation. And in particular, local flooding due to ageing drainage systems is an increasing concern in Wales. So, why the SUDS approach? Well, it's nothing new and it's been around for years, as you know. The SUDS approach mimics natural drainage, managing surface water at the surface and close to a source, controlling the flow, volume and rate of runoff and providing a range of additional benefits. It's in contrast to uh, what you're probably used to, traditional drainage techniques, you know, pipe to pond, which is based around underground pipes and basically convey that water as fast as you can away from the properties. The most effective SUDS use a series of various drainage components uh, providing a management train across the site. So e.g. property level, you could have your rainwater harvesting, your rainwater butts, you could have your rills going to a rain garden, then going into a swale in the road, into another pond and potentially another swale and your polishing pond at the end. Basically you should be able to drink that water before it goes into the water course, but don't ask me to do that. The SUDS management train works to control flow rates and reduce volume of runoff, providing treatment to protect water quality and opportunities to encourage biodiversity and amenity. Well designed, easy to maintain SUDs will deliver a range of important benefits for the local environment, the development and the communities. They contribute towards health and well-being through access to green spaces and improved air quality. Surface-based SUDs are visible in their operation, performance and are simpler, easier to monitor and maintain. Basically, if there's a coke can in the rill, you can see it, you can pick it up and put it in the bin. If there's a coke can in a drainage system, it's going to cause a blockage, potentially it's going to cause flooding because you can't see it. So, there's the Welsh Strategy Standards. So, with reference to standards, there's a set of principles which the developers will have to follow um, and incorporate into their surface water management schemes. So, the SUDs should aim to manage water on or close to the source of runoff as possible, treat rainfall as a valuable natural resource, so e.g. rainwater harvesting or your rainwater or your butts, your water butts. Ensure pollution is prevented at source rather than relying on drainage systems to treat and intercept it. Uh, manage rainfall to help protect people from increased flood risk 
and the environment for morphological and associated uh, ecological damage and use the suds management train across the site as I discussed earlier rather than the pipe to pond features which you're used to. Seek to make the best use of the available land through multifunctional use of public spaces so you could have that bioretention area that would only flood in an extreme event but it could be used as a play area and it's only going to flood in a 150 year storm. So with the application form, they will have to demonstrate um, that they've complied with these principles. And if they haven't, they have to tell us why they can't. So there's the 06 standards, runoff destination right down to construction, operation and maintenance. So I'll go through each one just, just briefly. So your runoff destination. This standard addresses the use of surface water by the development and where it should be discharged. The aim is to ensure that the runoff is treated as a resource and managed in a way that mi minimises the negative impact on the development, on flood risk, morphological and water quality. So priority, priority one is the preferred solution, it's the highest priority, and then four and five in except, exceptional circumstances. Obviously the combined sewer, the highway system and the surface water sewer is going to be overloaded already. So they have to follow this hierarchy. But you could have different destinations for, for the sites. You could potentially put 25% to uh, a water course, you could have 25% of that site go into infiltration, and then you could have another 25%, nowhere else to put it, it has to go into the combined sewer. So every site is different, every site will have different uh, characteristics. Standard two, hydraulic control. The aim of standard two is to manage the surface water runoff from and on the site to protect people from flooding up to a suitable return period. So we use 1 in 100 plus climate change. Uh, in Caffili, we use 30%. So I know there was a, somebody said 20 and 40, but we use middle of the road, 30. And to mitigate any increased flood risk to people and properties downstream of the site um, as a result of the development and protect the receiving water bodies from morphological damage. Standard three, water quality. Addresses the drainage design requirements to minimise the potential pollution risk posed by the surface water runoff to the receiving water body. Runoff from road, commercial and other urban environment can in particular contain grit, sediments, oils and hydrocarbons, metals and dissolved salts. Each of these have the potential to cause major pollution. Standard 4 addresses the design of SEDS components to ensure that where possible they enhance the provision of high quality, attractive public spaces which can help provide health and well-being benefits. So keeping the water as close to the surface will help to promote um, benefits. Managing runoff at source will uh, promote the use of smaller distribution features rather than the large attenuation feature at the end of that site. So you'd have your attenuation in your swales, your, 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 your smaller ponds, and then when you get to the end of the site, you haven't got this big pond at the end, you've just got smaller little distribution ones going through the site. Standard five addresses the design of SEDS to ensure where possible they create ecological rich green and blue corridors on the development, linking habitats together. And standard six, exactly what it says on the tin, design, construction, operation and maintenance. It deals with designing robust surface water drainage systems so they can be easily and safely constructed, maintained and operated. This is where your um, commuted sums come in. So it has to be sustainable for the lifetime of the development. Roger will discuss commuter sum with you later. So the SAV approval uh, process is a fundamental change to what the developers are used to. Information has to be provided up front. So as before, you could just put a, a, a planning condition, you know, full drainage proposals, uh, comprehensive drainage proposals to be provided to discharge that condition. We need everything up front, so we need those permeability tests, we need those hydraulic calcs. We're limited in the conditions that we can put, so everything has to be provided up front. You, you almost got to think we're akin to building regs, so if you were constructing this room and you were putting a beam across there, the building control officer would be saying, give me the calcs to prove it works. We are exactly the same in Wales, we need everything up front. There's all Wales application forms, and Roger will go through that when he goes through the process. Um, there's pre full and discharge of conditions. And there's also a legal agreement that the developer and the local authorities will have to ent enter into. Um, now, the process is seven weeks, so it's quite short, so it's going to be quite fast. Um, or if it's, a, 
if there's an environmental impact assessment, it goes to 12 weeks. So this legal agreement needs to be filled in within that seven weeks. And in that seven weeks, we obviously get the older, secure the non-performance bond, the maintenance funding through community sums, um, inspection regime, and obviously the land transfer. If somebody was to start on site without a SAB approval, it would be basically the same as planning where we slap them with a stop notice, okay? So there is an appeals process and there is an enforcement process as well. So what have we been doing for the last year? It's been a roller coaster, let me tell you. We have been part of various task and finish groups with um, Welsh Government. Roger will go through some of them. Ta uh, fees and bonds, commuted sums, the actual guidance document for, for setting up the SAB, um, the legal agreements, everything. We've purchased software to process the applications and we've had to, we've put, purchased software for checking calcs as well. So it's been quite an outlay. It's been about 20 grand on um, the software to process them and then obviously the extra hydraulic uh, software we needed. We've set up processes and procedures which Roger will go through. We've set up a web page so if you're interested have a look at the web webpage, tap, type in sustainable uh, approval body and it'll come up. Um, application forms, obviously Roger will go for that later. Online payment systems, we've developed that. Um, such training, we've obviously trained all our staff internally um, so we've done internal training and external training. And we're also going regional. So Caffili is joined with two other local authorities and we're doing their work for them. So I think we're the only one in Wales that have done that. It's been quite scary, but it's um, going forward, it's going to be amazing. Um, obviously, we've done that through service level agreements. And we've done various awareness internally. Roger, again, will go for that. Um, we've did, we had developers in and we had the landscape architects, design consultants. Uh, it was probably scary, but not as scary as this today, I'll be honest. Um, I haven't seen me shaking. Um, so yeah, and apparently Click Philly is uh, leading the way, so I'm delighted to be invited here today. Uh, so Roger's going to come up now, and he's going to go through how we set the process up. Well, Roger has a fair bit to go through, so uh, let's get started. Right, setting up SAB. So we know what a SUDS approval body is, we know what sustainable drainage is. So how do you go about setting up an approval body? It's entirely new, it's been a steep learning curve, and as Michelle said, it's been a, a roller coaster for the last 12 months. So what I wanted to touch on was the key elements, engagement and awareness, the application forms, which is key to gathering the information we need to process the, uh, the approvals, our processes and procedures, uh, the, our SUDS design and adoption manual, and how we informed various Welsh Government advisory task and finish groups. So, a little bit about the Wales background. So, Welsh Local Government consists of 22 unitary authorities, so that's 22 lead local flood authorities, or 22 sustainable drainage approval bodies, so that's 22 ways to deliver the same function, or 22 different ways to deliver the same function. So Welsh Government's aim with the implementation of Schedule 3 was to sort of create a consistent approach across Wales. So as we've developed the sustainable drainage approval body, we've tried to create consistency from the outset, whether that's through our procedures, our forms, through regional working, in everything. So as Michelle mentioned, we are working regionally with two other local authorities, and Welsh Government is keen to promote this regional collaboration to promote this consistency again. And I made a little note there, some people are not receptive to this new approach. Um, I think that's a, a common theme across England, Wales, Ireland and Scotland. So, that's where Caffili Council is, just in case nobody knows. So, engagement and awareness. So, it's all about creating a consistent message, what is SUDS, what is the SAB? So, Welsh Government produced um, a series of consultations, uh, three in total, and they were released to various um, uh, agency sort of consultants, whether that's Welsh Water, the authorities, um, Natural Resources Wales, so everybody had their say in how they could inform the delivery of this function. The Welsh Local Government Association prepared briefing notes and they were shared by the SUDS approval bodies via their websites. Uh, Welsh Government also released statutory guidance for the local authorities, uh, which has been invaluable in helping us set up the approach and creating consistency, especially through the maintenance charge, which I'll mention later. Uh, and training. As, you, as some of you mentioned earlier, there is a, a lack of understanding in the industry over some SUDS elements. So the Welsh Government, in conjunction with Syria, delivered some training workshops across Wales to try and create that consistent message for everyone. 
So in Caffili Council, we undertook some developer and consultant workshops. So we liaised directly with the House Builders Federation and we had 28 of them in the room, which as Michelle mentioned was very scary when you've got 28 developers all bombarding you with questions. So it was an entirely new approach and it was all about forming relationships with them. We've got to work with these people to deliver housing, whether it's you know, commercial housing, affordable housing. So once we've got these relationships formed, we can explain this new approach and hopefully work together to deliver our outcomes. And internally, Michelle touched upon this, um, when you think about sustainable drainage, you don't think about who the approval body will impact. So that could be public rights away, for instance. When they create um, a new public right away, they create an impermeable surface. Most of them more than 100 square metres, so they need to have approval. And we dealt with our building consultancy, highways, rights of way, our planners, our engineering projects division. Um, it's, as you can imagine, there's a lot of people to, to cover. So, external issues, moving on. The industry was providing a lot of mixed messages, especially in Wales. You had some sort of consultancies that were trying to interpret the legislation themselves and passing that information out to their clients, and it created a mixed message, and there was an inconsistent approach to advice. I've made a little note there as a prompt to myself that uh, some consult consultants were advising their clients to put a pond on the corner of the site and say that would be compliant sense. Well, in Wales, it's slightly different now. So despite all our engagement, we still had some questions and we're still dispelling myths and I'm sure we will for some time to come. So the usual questions, what is sustainable drainage? What is the SUDS approval body? Do I need to do this? Um, and the usual myths, SUDS are going to cost me more and it's going to be a hazard. So a little bit about the application form. Now, when you think of an application form, you think it's a small document, very simple to collate information. When you've got representatives from North, Mid and South Wales, all trying to have their input with different technical expertise or different agendas, it's quite difficult to create that consistent theme. And what we've ended up with is several documents which are about 37 pages long. And I've brought some examples with me, so if you want to pop along and say hello after, I can show you uh, the application forms. So we try to work out what we need it needed as the minimum. So we have pre-application forms, uh, a full application form, and a discharge of condition application form, each of those with detailed associated guidance. So the elements of a pre-application form we considered was the non-technical -te validation. So with the approval body, you think that it would just be drainage engineers who would be processing these applications, but it is non-technical admin as well. So we collated the information of the applicant details, the site details, the fee and compliance statements, all of which is used to validate an application. And then we moved on to the technical assessment and what was required as a minimum for us to give meaningful pre-application advice to inform the development going forward. So we sought to have compliance or principal statements, um, compliance statements for the standards, which Michelle mentioned, and how all this was evidenced. And this was followed by checklists. Um, this form was 37 pages long. A full application form, very similar. It consists of the non-technical validation and the technical assessment with a little more detail. As Michelle said, we need all that detail up front. So it's an assessment of flood risk, compliance statements to the standards, how you comply to the discharge hierarchy, infiltration assessments, and how you're going to secure your non-performance bond, your adoption, and your maintenance. And then moving to our sort of processes and procedures. It's an entirely new process, and it's often quite difficult for local government to get up and move in with these new things when they come into play. So we had to map our, act our activities step by step, and use this to inform applicants how the process works. We have to take them through the new process step by step. So we created um, a new technical approval process. So it's a clear audit trail is needed. So we have to make standard letters, standard processes, a standard approach, and software. Another element we had to look at was our local policy and guidance. So we use the Syria SUDS manual. That's the Bible for SUDS in the UK and it's referenced in the Welsh Government documents. However, they provide the technical standards, but what we need to consider is a more local approach to sustainable drainage. So what is the approach to SUDS in Caffili? What, what will work, what won't work? Um, how do I get my site adopted? How do I make an application? So, and how it all fits into planning and open space implications. 
So all that is tied into our local policy and guidance documents. So we cover everything from the charging regimes to pre-application fees, commuted sums, and one thing Caffili has recently implemented is land range bylaws, so we're the first in Wales for that. We also um, were on various task and finish groups, um, as I mentioned earlier, with the Welsh Government, and one of them was the fees, bonds and commuted sum group. So with SUDs going forward, most of you will find this quite interesting, in Wales we'll be charged, the SAB has a duty to adopt, so we will be charging £168 per inspection, so we know what we're getting when we inspect the site. And we'll be securing non-performance bonds should there be a default on the, the construction. Maintenance, I know Andy mentioned maintenance earlier, um, that will be secured via a commuted sum, which needs a consistent level playing field across Wales. So what's been recommended in the Welsh Government guidance is a design life of 60 or 120 years. The commuted sum is to consider maintenance and replacement costs, and it's the cost of the, the SAB undertaking the works, not the developer. Uh, we apply a discount rate, which is a standard 2.2%, and all this is based on the County Surveyors Society methodology, which was written in 2008. So it's nothing new. It's a consistent approach, very easy to follow. Uh, it's used for Section 38 and Section 278 agreements for highways. So it's, it is a sustainable means of funding SUDs going forward. And I'm sure most of you will be watching Wales very closely how this works. So that was a whistle-stop tour of the different elements. Um, Personally, I think 2019 is a year of change for SEDS, and I'm sure you're all going to be watching Wales very closely. And me and Michelle feel compelled to make this work, because as she said, everyone's looking at Caffili at the moment, saying we're leading on it. And it's, it's all quite terrifying, to be honest. But, uh, thank you very much.